Well, hello, everybody. Um, it's me, Kelly. Obviously, since you're watching my channel. Um, I was watching some YouTube videos, and please forgive me if this is your idea and I did not name you. I'm so sorry, uh, but I cannot remember the name of the YouTuber that I got this idea from. But I do want to state it up front. It's not my idea, okay? I just saw it and I thought, oh my gosh, how clever, okay? This is a little baby journal is what I call it, but um, it's an envelope journal, right? And it's a journal made with envelopes and you can, you know, it's got, it can have pockets from the envelopes, um, just all kinds of stuff. And I kind of threw this together last night while I was watching some videos just to, uh, sorry, I'm not in screen, you know, just to kind of try it out. And I was using up some of my smaller six by six papers and some of my bigger scraps. Now the video that I watched, they covered the whole inside of the envelope, but I thought, how pretty that was with the yellow trim, you know, kind of like a yellow mat. So I, I cut it like a, about a quarter of an inch smaller than the diameter. I think it was like three and three quarters by five and a quarter. So I cut it by three and a half by five. So that way, you know, it gave me a little bit of a, a lip and I kind of like that. So I just wanted to show you what I learned and thought maybe you know, for something that's really, really quick, say you need a quick gift idea or, you know, something as a goodie prize for one of your videos or something like that. It just, you can kind of tailor it or you can kind of leave it, you know, maybe just color coded and then let them decorate it or however you want to do it. Or I just, I thought this was so creative and so easy. Oh my gosh, easy, you know? So I was going to, um, to do one with you today on the video and show you what I found and how much fun it was, how easy it was. I was so tripped about it, okay? I already picked some papers out, some coordinating papers from the same paper pack. You know, so I've already got that set out. I don't have any cut out yet, but I'm gonna set these aside so I can show you. Now you can pretty much do these with any envelope, but I would suggest all right, for instance, if you had envelopes that have the skinny flap, all right, they don't work as well. They can still work, don't get me wrong, okay, but they don't work as well that I found. So I put these aside and I found some envelopes that have the triangular flap and I found those work the best, okay? Now you want from what I understand, if I remember correctly, you want two envelopes just as is. Set those aside because this is going to be front and back, okay? Just like that. But the other ones you want to put in there, you want to flip your flap. Ha! Ah, flip your flap. Ha 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 ha. Backwards, okay? You want to fold that backwards on the ones you're going to use as your pages, okay? Now, these aren't going to be very big and they're not going to be, you know, um, able to be embellished a whole lot all right so say you want something that's very very simple very mild you know but very elegant or kooky or you know whatever your style is let me see i don't even know how many i have here all right so i've got front and cover or front and back and i've got one two three four five six seven eight Okay, I wouldn't really go much more than that, but I have one extra, so I'm just going to throw that in anyway. Now, the key is flipping them over where the flap is up. All right. Yeah. And then taking the one envelope and tucking it in to the flap, just like that. Now, you can glue it now if you'd like. All right. And then you close it, but I kind of wait until I'm, I get it all together and then I go back and I throw a little bit of glue on there. Okay. 
But all I'm doing is tucking them in and folding them over. I think I believe I did that one wrong. I did. I was upside down. Okay. See, that's why you need to flip them backwards. Flip your flaps. <laughs> that's kind of funny. Flip your flaps. All right. No, upside down. That's what you want. Upside down. Well, obviously, the first one is going to be the right way, so I had an extra. Throw that there. All right, upside down. And now we can tuck your tuck your tuck your tuck your flaps. Flip your flaps and tuck your flaps. All right. So upside down. And tuck it in. And that's all you're doing, right? Upside down. And you're tucking, tucking your flaps in. Now you can customize this any way you want. You know, you can turn it into like a, maybe a coupon holder, um, an address book, um, just a receipt book, whatever, a pocket thing. It all depends on how big the envelopes you want to use. And you can do this with little bitty envelopes. Oh my gosh, that's such a great idea. I wonder where mine are. Okay, let me think. Let me think. All right, I'll think about it and then figure it out. All right, and then... Yeah, I'll do one more and then I'll tuck, I'll flip the other one over. Nope, that's got to be upside down. Alrighty. Now this one is right side up. Alright, and the reason being is you want the flat side on the out. Right? Because this is going to be your back cover. Now that flap that you have left over from the beginning, you can take, you can score it if you want. Um... All I was doing was just kind of folding it over like that. And then you can glue that to the back. So then you've got this beautiful little, you know, journal made of envelopes. And each one has a pocket. Now you can cover them up or you can leave them loose or you can cut some of the ends off. Now what I'm going to do before I glue that outside flap and you can use tape if you want, but uh, regular glue tends to um, let you move it a little bit better. You know, gives you a few seconds of drying time. You know, where you can kind of reposition it if you need and all of that. So, and I didn't even use very much, just a little bit. See, just a little bit. And then... I tuck it in. Rub it flat. There. And all this does is... Now, okay, I will say that... Uh, you got to be careful with your glue if you want to use some of the pockets because if you're not and the glue gets on top of it then you're going to end up having a half of a pocket that's kind of glued shut so yeah I'm not doing a lot just a little bit just enough to kind of hold that flap in there And I also found when you're putting it in, you want to make sure down here that you're not pushing it up underneath, you know, and you're leaving it flush with the edge. Because if not, I found that with the other one. Where's my other one? I did that with one and it kind of offset things. It's not quite straight. It's, you know what I mean? See if you can see that. That's not quite straight. It's at an angle. And that kind of just... Womper jawed the whole thing. But that was my first. 
so I'm still happy with it. Like I said, just, just enough to give it that, that support you need to hold on to it, to hold it together. Now, if you didn't want to glue your flaps in, that's fine too, because when you put the, uh, when you flip this outside flap over, um, it kind of holds them all together anyway. But uh, for me, I like that extra support because, you know, sometimes I get rough with my journals when I'm trying to put them together. But yeah, this is just an envelope journal. If you ever have those uh, greeting cards that you use and you somehow, even though they have the right amount of cards and the right amount of envelopes, you always manage to have extra envelopes. I know I do. Don't know how. It's just that's how it works. Yep. So I'm only putting a little bit. I'm not even getting that fancy. I'm not getting it all up to the edges or, you know, I'm not worried about it. I'm just flipping and tucking and having fun with my flaps. <laughs> I like still like that flipping my flaps. <laughs> okay. And see, with the glue only being under the flap, you still have this opening for the pocket. Okay, and then we've got one more, which I'm not going to do upside down because I don't want that pocket on the outside. This is the one I'm going to actually do this way. Now see, that's nice and straight-ish. <laughs> and then with this outside one, fold it up. And glue this one. Now this outside one, I will take it up to the edge. Only because, you know. It's on the outside. And I'm not trying to put a pocket on the outside. So let's put the glue up. Oh my goodness. Stay. All right. So now we have. Look at that. Look how easy that was. You didn't have to sew it. You didn't have to staple it. You didn't have to worry about pamphlet stitches or, you know, anything like that. And it's already got pockets in it. That's how easy that was. Now, all you got to do is decorate it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the envelope because uh, it was loose. I didn't have it in a box. So I don't have, I don't have any measurements. So let's see. It's four and three quarters by six and a quarter. Now I will forget that, so I'm going to write that down. Four and three quarters by six and a quarter. All right, now I'm just writing that right on the envelope because I'm going to cover it anyway. And let's decide which one we want as a cover page and which one we want as a back page. Let me see. I kind of like this one as a cover page, but not really. Let's see. I like this one right here with that hinge right there. I'm going to do it upside down and put the hinge up top. Six of one, half dozen of the other. That's an idea. Let's see. Here's one. No. I'm not really big on shabby chic, but I like the old vintage look. But not shabby chic. I'm not into all the, you know, frilly flowers and all the laces. I like some lace. Okay. I'm a minimalist when it comes to shabby chic. I'll put it that way. 
Let's see. I kind of like this one for the front. All right, so we want four and three quarters by six and a quarter. And what are we going to use on the back? Will this one match for the back? Yeah, I think it will. All right, so let's get our paper cutter. Now I want this in there, so I'm going to turn it upside down. And four and three quarters is this way, so we'll do it like this. Four and three quarters. Okay. And six and a quarter, isn't that what I said? Yes. Okay. So we will pop that up. So there's the front of our journal. Now, if you are into lace or ribbon or anything like that, I will show you this. Okay, let me grab some lace really quick. I have some right here. Ugh. I did. Oh, there we go. Okay, this is a piece of work, which actually I think I might use. And you wanted to put some lace on it. Put your lace on first. Let's see, how do we want to do that? It's kind of wide. Let's see if I have a smaller piece. Ugh. Let's see, those might work. Whoops. Sorry about that. And what do we have in here? We can probably find something in that mess. Let's just look in there. <clears throat> when I'm out like shopping in thrift stores and, and consignment stores and things like that, like I found this whole baggie full of notions, trim, rick rack. Uh, binding tape uh, or seam binding um, and the whole bag itself was only like three bucks so I'll pick them up like that and then I'll just stick them in my my you know my fiber stash and a lot of times I haven't even looked at it so I just let's see that one's kind of pretty but it's white and I don't know if I want white oh now see that's pretty that pink might work I like that pink that mauve, that hot pink is up top, but I don't want the hot pink. Oh, there's a couple different kinds on here. Then there's, there's white. Oh, awesome sauce. There is a bunch on here, which I think I'm going to use some of this. All right. I like that pink, so let's put that in here. Tuck these all back in here, and we'll play... Uh, we'll play explore the, uh, the lace and all that later at another time. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. So let's measure this. Uh, let's see. Oh, scissors. And it's easier if you cut it a little bit longer and can trim it later than cutting it too short. So let's go ahead. I could probably get out my hot glue, but I'm just working with paper. So it's not, you know, not something that's really important in the grand scheme of things. Okay, so let's make sure it's kind of even, at least, relatively. And then take my finger, rub it in. And then my paper, right on top. <clears throat> now, with, when I'm doing paper, I'd rather use tape, only because 
I think it gets, I don't know, it just doesn't take as much and it doesn't get lumpy, you know, with glue. Glue can get lumpy, especially if you're using Eileen's Tacky Glue. Unless you pretty much water it down and use a paintbrush, it's going to be lumpy, no matter what you do. Even if you squeegee it with a credit card. Um, it gets still lumpy, doesn't matter. Now, mind you, you know, you got a, a bridal shower coming up, a birthday party, um, even a baby shower. You can tailor it to, uh, to a baby shower. Put this on. And that little bit of glue that's under the lace just helps to secure that paper a little bit better. Then. Trim that side and that side. And there you go. That's the front cover. That's how easy that was. It's like, oh my gosh, easy. All right. And I'll keep that lace in case I want to add maybe one or two more pieces somewhere throughout. I don't know. Like I said, I'm not a big lace person. But um, every so often, the occasion calls for it, and I like to use it. And I lost my little cap for my glue. Oh well. It's here somewhere. If it'd be a snake, it'd be it'd bite it rewind. Okay, if it was a snake, it would bite me, right? Alright. Now that's page one. And we were gonna do the back. I think I'll do lace on the front and the back, and then I'm I'm not gonna do any more. Let's do it that way. That way we've kind of got some continuity. There we go. And I will put this away. Oh, I better wait till I cut my paper. Let me do that first. All right. So it was, what was it? Oh my gosh, four and three quarters and six and a quarters. <laughs> I better write that on something else, shouldn't I? Um, do do do. Okay, I'll get my little grocery list. Okay, so it was four and three quarter, six and a quarter. Because I will definitely forget that. Set that aside. Four and three quarter. And six and a quarter. Make sure we get it right side up. And that's how we want it. Yes, sir, Bob. Uh oh, what did I do with the lace? There it is. All righty. See, it's not a whole lot, but it's enough. A 
lost my tape edge. There we go. Now I am taking the tape right up to the edge. So that way it doesn't catch on anything. Okay. Some tape double face tape you have to sit there and you have to use your um, bone folder or a fingernail or something to help set it you know or make it stick to the paper and all there we go Look how easy that was. Front and back cover of a journal. See that? There's the front and there's the back. And then on the inside, you can do whatever you want. You can cover up every pocket and make your own if you don't like those inside pockets like that. Okay? Um, if you only wanted to do, you know, like say only a piece. That's upside down but only a piece of this and leave that open as a pocket you can do that okay or you can take yeah that's that was the other thing I wanted to show you okay so let me get another piece of paper cut and I will do, actually, let's do this one right here. So we want four and three, can I just drop something on my foot? I have no idea what that was. Oh well, if it's important, I'll remember, right? Oh, excuse me, I had to get some tea. Okay, so we've got four and three quarter. And see, that'd make a perfect tag or, uh, you know. Anyways, and then six and a quarter. Uh-oh, there's a white line there that I want to trim off. I don't care for that that much. There we go. But I do want this, so I want to make sure that's in the area that I cut. In the measured area. All right. Now, probably, I'm not going to do it on the front one, but I'll do it on the second one. All right. So say you don't want an inside pocket. Okay. But maybe... You want an up top pocket. So then you take your scissors and you cut the barest sliver off the top. The barest sliver. All right. Now see, even that right there will flip up that piece when you do that. But that's okay. You take your glue. Right there. You glue that back down. All right. And we want that like that. All right. But because this is open right here, we don't want to glue all of that. We just want to glue the or tape this one side. 
Oh, there's my little thingy. Yay, I'll put that on my computer so I don't lose it. So let's do that since we're only going to do the outside and we're not going to glue the whole thing. That way, I can find, where did it go? Oh, I put it up above me. Right. Oops, that one's done. Let me grab the other one. I probably have three or four rolls of double stick tape um, started here, there, and everywhere. So, now I will say if you don't have anything that you want to go all the way down, okay, say you only have, you only want a small pocket or a short pocket, then I would throw some glue up under there or a piece of tape or something so that, you know, you won't go all the way down. And remember, if you've got a little bit of hangover of tape, like I've got right there, just fold it back over on itself. You don't have to worry about gumming up your scissors, trimming tape, and all of that. You know, just some of the easiest things you'd think, oh yeah, common sense. But when you, see if you've never done it before, it wouldn't have crossed your mind. You would have thought, oh crap, I got too much, I gotta trim it, da 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 All righty. So let's now add this. And voila, you've got a pocket right here. Let me see, to tuck things in. Now let's figure this one out. Alrighty. Let's put that and we will go. I like this side better, so that's the side I'm going to put in my cutting area. So it was four and three quarter. So set that aside. And I'm going to trim this top edge because it didn't tear cleanly out of the paper pad, which is kind of aggravating, but you know, hey. All right, and then I want six and a quarter, so. And that will go right there. So you can do this throughout the whole thing. Uh, no, I'll just leave that there. Now, if you wanted to leave that as a pocket, you could just put the paper on one side and not that one. You know, oops, wait, where we are. There we are. All right. You could do that if you wanted. I don't want a pocket up front, so I'm going to, I'm going to glue mine down or tape it down. But this has got to be, and even if you didn't have paper pads, right? If you wanted to go more um, mixed media or, you know, like junky journal or whatever, you can use dictionary pages. You can use your gel prints from your jelly plate. Um, alcohol ink papers. You can use any scrap papers you want. Uh, I mean, it's just... The options are still limitless. And when you're done, you didn't have to worry about measuring pages, making a, you know, a front cover or a back cover to a journal. Because sometimes I get stuck on just doing that and I don't know what to do next, you know. It seems pretty intimidating. And there we go.
go. There's that. So, so far. I, it's just fabulous. I love this. I'm going to leave that there as a journaling section. That one's got journaling area on it, so I'm going to put something on this side. I like this right here. I think that'll go well with that. Okay. Pull this out of the way. And since I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and do I want it that way or do I want it up and down? I want it up and down. <laughs> like, does it matter? Yes, it does. All right. We're going to Actually, that is the side I want. I'm just doing two pages at a time. You want to make sure the pages are the same size when you do this, though, because so this is the four and three quarters. So that way, you don't have any missing mismatch. But this takes less time. So let's do. Oh yeah. Okay. So that's. Now we want to do the six and a quarter. I like that one there better. And then all it is is putting putting pages together. Now, you don't even have to do all the pages because like some of them I'm not going to put any paper on, but you can come back through with the stamp and customize however you want. You know, just to give that paper or that one page a little bit of, uh, you know, oomph. Yes, oomph. So. Now, if you, if you notice, I'm not going all the way up to the other page. I'm leaving that fold blank only because I don't want anything to hamper the ability of the journal to open and close easily. There we go. This pocket I'm going to leave there and I'll probably just stamp around it. Yeah, I used to be into old cars. I'm not anymore. Now they just look like junk to me. <laughs> Funny how that is. You know, how something at one time in your life seems so important. And then as time passes, you wonder why you spent so much time and effort on something that, you know, doesn't mean anything to you later on. Kind of helps you put things into perspective of, you know, what is truly, truly important in life, you know. Now I did, I used to love rebuilding engines and, you know, restoring old cars. But maybe it's just because I'm old enough and I just don't give a hootie anymore about it. And my, my tastes have changed over time. They really have. All right, so there's that one. I'm 
you do that through the whole thing. So let me finish this up. I'll just put it, putting, put it, <laughs> rewind, <laughs> putting papers in here, and I will be right back. Okay, I got it pretty much done. I added a little bit of washi tape to give it a little bit of oomph on some of the blank pages with the pockets. So let's do a quick run through and I will show you how, I mean, this only took me about 10 minutes to finish up. That was it after I paused the video. So, all right, there's the front cover. There's the inside cover. There's, I put a little bit of washi tape. I haven't stamped or anything like that. I haven't made the tags or, you know, anything for up top. Actually, I could probably use this bookmark that was made and tuck that right in there. Okay. There we go. Okay. Added just a strip of washi down there. I added a strip through the center. Just a piece on the outside edge. This is on one of the pieces that's got the pocket. And, you know, if you wanted to add uh, some rickrack or trim around that, you know, that's cool. This was pretty much just putting the papers in it after putting it together. So here's another pocket. Oh, there we go. Another pocket page. I put some washi in. And there's the back. You see how easy, completely, totally risk-free um, they took paper envelopes and tape pretty much. Well, a little bit of glue, but yeah. And it's, it's done. That's how easy that was. So thank you for joining me. I'm going to go ahead and sign off now. Um, if I can remember... Uh, or look in my history, see if I can't figure out where I watched that video of who um, I got this envelope journal idea from. I will link it in the description below. Um, if you like my video, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Um, if you'd like to join my Facebook group, it's Coffee Cup Crafts in Conversation on Facebook. And the link for that is in the box below. Subscribe if you're not already. If you want notifications of my video, click that little bell next to it. And on that, I'm going to let you go. A um, couple things. Always, always, always remember to find the humor in life. Because if you don't, life sucks. It really does. And uh, always feel free. Give yourself the freedom to craft yourself silly. It's a must. It's a must. Um, thanks. Everybody have a wonderful day evening, morning, whatever time you're watching this, and God bless.